Good morning. To those of you who are here and those who are on the radio, you know it's fall going into winter when you're driving up 151 and the soybeans are all down and those ice shanties are starting to come out of garages. And it's All Saints Sunday. Put together, it's a good package. I invite you to stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Let us confess our sins and the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have, we have gone, gone astray. astray. We, we gaze, gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Since all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, by the grace of, by the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. So receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. We sing the hymn. Streams in the countless 
host singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you, you show, show forth, forth your almighty power, power chiefly by reaching out, out to us in mercy. mercy. Grant us, us the fullness, fullness of your grace, strengthen our trust in your promises, and bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your, through your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. Our first lesson is Psalm 146. <coughs> and it will be read responsively. It is a psalm of praise for God's help. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Whenever their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. 
who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. The second lesson is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. And now the Sunday school students may be dismissed with Heidi for their lesson with her. Lord, let my heart be good so open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good so where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good so. The Holy Gospel for this day is a reading from John chapter 11. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Judeans who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Judeans said to him, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because it has been, he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, 
so that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. It was a day a lot like yesterday, kind of 50-ish, sunny, with a chilly wind. And my mother and Aunt Betty were standing with my brother and myself on that windy hillside at the Robinson Run Cemetery. We did that every year. And my mother and aunt were the keepers of the family story. At three different cemeteries this day, they showed us the place where each member of the family had been laid, and they named them, and they told us how we were related to them. My eyes connected with that one gravestone at which it was blank. There was nothing on it. No name, no dates. Whose is this grave? I asked my mother. She said, well, no one remembers his name. He was the hired man who wandered onto the farm one day and he worked there until he died. And when he died, grandpa decided he would be buried in this spot next to his grave. Then I protested with a question. Nobody remembers his name, I said. No one visits his grave. No one ever leaves flowers here. No one, my mother would reply. And then she would add, no one but God. I've always remembered these conversations because I was a child then struggling with life and death questions. I'm an adult now and I'm still struggling <laughs> with the same questions, life and death. But my mother's reply was always for me a lesson in hope. I had been thinking as a child that to be forgotten was really the end of everything. But my mother reminded me in the middle of Robinson Run Cemetery, among the graves and the stories of those remembered and those forgotten, that even the forgotten are remembered in the heart of God. This is our All Saints today. It's a day when we're remembering in tears and in resurrection hope our loved ones who lived with us and now have died. We do this by remembering what God really promised us about living and dying, and by claiming those promises for us and for those who we have surrendered into God's care and memory. The lessons for All Saints Day includes that really strange reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. There's a vision there that uh, some people think means it's going to happen in the future. But the fact is, the whole book of Revelation is about God's promises to us now, about God's hope for us now, about God coming into our lives today. The message is that the people of God in the present, in the emotional and spiritual turmoil of our times, know that God lives alongside us as comforter and grief bearer. Not only our grieving, not only those who are listed in the bulletin, not only those we remember, but even those 730,000 people who died 
because of our very slow response to the COVID pandemic. They are remembered in the heart of God as well. The second promise of God in that vision in chapter 21 of Revelation is one that gives hope to us. It deals with that sense of longing we have. Are we going to be reunited with those who have died before us? Is, is heaven something real? Or as some men in a study group I am with, I used to believe that stuff, but now I just think death is the end of things. We're here today to protest that sense that there is nothing after death. We're here to say today that God has promised that after death, there is life with God forever. Now, the book of Revelation can be a little confusing at that point because it talks about a, a city in which there's no church. There's no lights there at all because God's presence is the light all we, that we need, that the gates are all open, no door, no keys, no doorknobs, they're just open all the time. And there's safety and hospitality for all who are invited to come there. A community of people whose only description the promise really says is the people who are remembered in the heart of God. And all of these images are hopeful ones for you and me. The point, of course, is that God gathers a people of hope, a people who, like you and me, are less than perfect, a people who are less than confident that God even cares for us, a people who are stressed out by the long months of being separated from everybody we know and love and then separated by masks, a picture of pastors in every church I know who are totally stressed out now because all they have seen of you for months has been in a television camera or a computer screen and now masked. And we're all waiting to have that full sense of being in the presence of the community of faith and seeing each other face to face, touching each other, sharing the gift of peace. And we're stressed because it isn't happening yet. But because of that stress, God gives us this hopeful sign. There are open doors of hospitality coming. There is security of people for those who care about each other. There is the reflected light of the risen Christ in the midst of our daily life. And there is that promise again that all who die are remembered in the heart of God. In the middle of that description, there is a, a phrase called the Lamb's Book of Life. I remember as a child, I used to think that God really had a book and was putting names in it. And then my mother reminded me, are you confused with Christmas? You know, St. Nicholas keeps track of the good and bad. And I thought, hmm, maybe I got that confused. So I've come to understand that, again, this is a picture, a picture of hope. It's a reminder that because God views each person and event through the lens of the cross, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, these lists that it talks about are really simply a reminder that God claims us all, and we can be confident that were remembered in the heart of God. A young couple in one of my congregations had a very sad time when their 13-month-old daughter died and they were stricken with grief. They and their friends struggled and they tried to comfort each other, but they really were stuck on how are we going to deal with this grief with no idea how they might cope in the future, the couple themselves came to the pastor and said, we don't know what we're going to do. We know how hurt we are. We know how confused we are. But we want a memorial service that is a festival of God's love and hope. 
We want the whole congregation there. We want to sing Easter hymns, not sad hymns, but those great Easter hymns that we all know. It's the way the congregation is going to help us to have hope and to see that in the future, we will also be able to say, and our daughter is remembered in the heart of God. Friday at noon, I was watching the funeral of Colin Powell, a really great statesman and general in these troubled times. And one moment that I will always remember is when the preacher suggested this picture. He put it this way, one moment Colin was alive, surrounded by his family, and the next moment, he was not breathing, but he was captured in the heart of God and surrounded by the saints of heaven. This is an awesome picture of what we believe, our confidence. It is the reason that we learn how to deal with grief and have hope in the middle of it. We've all been there. We've all been to services of funerals and memorials. The ages of our beloved were all different. The experiences of questioning, of grieving, of pain, and even hopeful memories of that particular person have been different. But where we are this day, is that we're moving from shock to acceptance and that move is different for each one of us. But the promises of God have not changed. They are the same. And that's what we hold on to today. As you listen to the words of the hymns, I ask you to remember and claim again that promise our loved ones are remembered in the heart of God. As you hear the naming of your loved ones who have died in this congregation this year, as you see a candle lighted, God invites you to claim the promise. We are all remembered in the heart of God. And with the whole church of Jesus Christ, today, we will name comforted and hopeful those whom we have known in this community of faith. Thanks be to God that all of us are remembered in the heart of God. <clears throat> Amen. So we turn to remembering those this day, and we invite your attention to the words on the screen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, I'm on the wrong page. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. God comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might have a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his.
Lisa Luck. Beverly Doman. Lola May Munchai. Joan Carol Erickson. Glenn Luck. Ron Buzowitz. Gerald Jerry Reinke. Mary Ann Aaron. Richard Hine. Ruth Mary Price. Jody L. Sabrilski. David Schmidt. Judith Malku. Phyllis June Nagler. William A. Krieger. You may have other family members or friends and neighbors whose death you are grieving. We light a candle in remembrance of them as you name them in your hearts. Remembering those people, we sing the hymn in joy and hope. Today, 
Though often by this world despised, their hearts by God are richly prized. Give thanks that we may say we share the pilgrim way. With the whole church on earth and the saints in heaven, let us confess the faith which we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need, responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for social ministries of the church around the world and for every ministry that heals, lifts up, and empowers those who are poor, oppressed, abused, abandoned, or ignored. Build up your ministries and prosper all works of mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for the bounty of creation and a world of abundance. Protect the earth from all who would devour its resources. Create and strengthen sustainable communities who honor your creation with loving care. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for elected leaders and officials who seek peace for all nations and lead efforts toward greater justice. Give them wisdom to govern with insight and compassion and make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you for plentiful harvests and generous hearts. Send needed resources and caring neighbors to all those in need. We pray for refugees, orphans, widows, those unemployed, those suffering abuse, and all who are in need. Restore to health all who are sick in any way, especially Terry, Levon, Dorothy, Tina, Oliver, Judy, Andy, Nate, John, and Mark. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for the saints who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us, especially Eugene Swan, Raymond Marks, and Judy Bergeson's son, Dan Frizz. Comfort their families and all who grieve and lead us by their example until you gather us in your heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We will now offer up our offertory prayer in response to gifts received. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you so love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is in right, it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of the saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints in heaven, the choirs of angels and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All who are hungry and thirst come, for this table is ready. Please follow the direction of the ushers as you come forward today.
of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world, the Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing the hymn. My life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. The loving word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Andy. <laughs> <laughs> 